Hello, hello everybody, and of course, welcome to the third game of this semi-finals between Team Druckwell and the Mongols. Some pretty good games so far along. Let's keep up that going. Well, of course, this is the ESPL Weekly Series. I'm Briefcase. With me is Mito. What's up, guys? So this will be the final game between Drucko and the Mongols. And now, who do you think will win this game? Oh god, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Team Drucko, they don't have like it anymore. Mongols see the power of them. They don't want to deal with them. He's very annoying to him, or to them, I should say. So, I don't know. Pretty much anybody's game, I think. Clearly, the Mongols can weather storms. They and if they have some good pickups. They, they know exactly what they want to do, how they're doing it, and... It just feels like Team Druckwell, if they can't get a really obscenely strong foothold in that early and mid game, where it looks like they really prosper, they have a great time, they find pickoffs, they make plays. If Team Druckwell can't get the ball rolling to such an extreme extent that the Mongols can't kind of stall it, can't push it back, it feels like the Mongol, or it feels, feels like Druckwell will win. But otherwise, the Mongols, they can weather that storm. They can play that farming game. They can lose all of their towers and still come back from it. So it just feels like Team Druckwell, they need to start snowballing early, hard, keep up the pressure, and the Mongols will, will falter. But otherwise, the Mongols, they're going to weather that storm. They're going to be okay. They're going to be able to find their gold, find their experience eventually, and be able to kind of ramp it back up to push back into Team Druckwell's face. Yep, and for those of you guys who are wondering like what the other semifinals is, it's between C Nullis and um, let's see, Team Infused. There we go. And back to this game, however, I feel like it's so evenly matched. Joker the play a more of an aggressive style with um, a lot of pushing, uh, emphasis on pushing. Whereas the Mongols, I, r I'm just dying to see that Wraith King again. That hero last time, wow, it, it blew my mind. The Shadow Priest plus Wraith King, they just went in. Oh, and there we go. Finally, we see the Ember Spirit being picked up by Druckwell. Yeah, man. Lycan and... took his spot in the ban list. They don't want to deal with him. <laughs> and once again, Mongols, they're going with the Centaur War on Um Against Ember, generally you want to grab silencing heroes like Doom been the perfect choice. And you have Draw Ranger, and if you want to get, get into some form of pushing, you always have the Death Prophet. So, there are quite a lot of good answers to Ember Spirit, but if you don't get any of those, it's it's terrifying to deal with him. Oh yeah, and with Bat Rider there, you can't really be looking for any single one hero though that'll also try and kind of pick off Ember Spirit, because Bat Rider's always going to be able to take them out no matter what. So, I mean, things are looking kind of good for both teams. I personally, I, I was critiquing that Centaur War Runner pickup last, last draft, but it did so much work for them in that last game. It saved a lot of asses with that ult, especially against the Storm Spirit. Things worked out really nicely there, but of course Team Druckwell, right now, not too sure if they can really do it. As soon as Batrider does get in there, he's gonna get that lasso. I don't think the Centaur uh, ult's really gonna stop that by any means. And of course Ember Spirit has an ensnare himself. So, I don't know, maybe a bit of a questionable thing. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how the rest of this goes. But obviously, Centaur, with a blink, that's a lot of damage that AA can pile on along with that uh, along with that Ice Blast of his. So, so far, they do have quite a bit of burst coming out of them. But, I don't know, Ember Spirit doesn't seem to care too much about magic damage. And, of course, Double Edge is indeed magical along with Hoof Stomp. So, so far, these two heroes not poised very well, I feel, to actually kill Ember. I feel what Mongols need is a hero like Disruptor. That that is the best hero possible. It removes the Bat Rider. As soon as he blinks in, lasso someone, you just send him right back to where he is. And the silence it works wonders against Ember Spirit as well. So I feel like for Mongols, Disruptor would be the perfect choice. Not only that, it, it does combo nicely along with Ancient Apparition as well. Uh, but it's gonna be very hard to lock down heroes before they hit those big level 6 ultimates. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I think Disruptor, like, you have hit the nail on the head, my friend. Just for how well that hero deals with Ember Spirit in pretty much every single way I can think of, it is just astounding. Oh, you see him teleport back and then he leaves the Fire Remnant? You just wait around it. You know as soon as he's back, all you need to do is glimpse him back home. And, um, you know, it, it just deals with Ember in such a such a strong and basically just countery way. It's it's kind of obnoxious, but 
I mean, always happy to see that hero, and as we've seen in the past, AA with uh, with Ags along with Disruptor with Ags is a goddamn force to be reckoned with. Yeah, another option that moguls can go for is grabbing a Wisp. Wisp is also another great hero uh, that deals wonders against Batrider. As well as they have the global presence, and why not abuse it a little bit more? Um, they do need, if they, they are going to go for the Wisp, they need initiators. They need people with lockdowns, like Nyx Assassin, like Lion. Anything with a potent initiation based kind of stun will work. And instead they go for the Naga Siren. Oh man, oh man. Please, please, please let it be a carry Naga Siren. But I have a feeling it's going to be a support Naga Siren just to combo with the Ancient Apparition. Really? I'm devastated. Dude, I don't know. I think it could be I think it could be uh definitely a carry Naga Siren cuz obviously you're not going to you're not going to push in all in with your illusions. Hopefully the Mongols have practiced this. You play the, the most freakish amount of rat dota you take zero fights if you do you have your aa alt waiting in the wings to try and help you along in that way and then ember spirit's really gonna fall off because he's really great at those team fights forcing the issue and getting a huge amount of work done with his sleight of fist but if naga siren is pushing every single lane there's nothing that ember can do here's well, hoping ember he can get Multiple divine rapiers and then just <laughs> go and end the game. Flat of fist for the win. Triple triple rapier, just like the Dusa. But a little bit faster, obviously. He's got a little bit more mobility for his troubles. Yeah. Oh baby, yeah. Radiant team pick. Dude, that's Radiant. a that's a Trent that's a combo right there. You got Trent Protector. As long as he gets a nice ult, maybe gets a blink dagger in that mid game, Ember Spirit is just gonna clean house, I feel like. Hmm. Not if Naga Siren gets Radiant, sir. No. no. See, it is a support Naga Yeah, Siren. I'm sorry, friend. <laughs> Hold it. Man, but with the Trian being picked up, right, it can be potentially an uh, aggressive trial lane. Trian is actually so good in that scenario. Um, but most people just value Trian for its more defensive purposes. And that's just ca casting the, the, the armor. The living armor across because it's global it's so good but if you max a leech seed in an aggressive trialing scenario it can it's potential it, it's the same as having a mech for your team uh at the same time having a, like a miniature urn constantly sucking away the op opponent's hp pool um but if mongols are not capable of downing towers in like one push Korean protectors is going to heal those towers right back up Oh yeah, and I mean now I'm, I don't even know who really the Mongols or the Team Drockwell can really pick up or who they even need right now. Like Ember Spirit seems perfectly poised, nice and ready to deal with what Mongols has to throw at him at the moment quite nicely. Fairly certain he can Ember Spirit his way, or I should say Fire Remnant his way, out of uh, Fonaga's Sirens in Snare, so I'm never too worried about that honestly. And Luna, not the tankiest of heroes until the mid game, so Ember Spirit can really abuse that as well. Not to mention his Flame Guard gonna be really helping him out in any solo fights he has to deal with Luna. So I don't, I don't know. It looks like Ember Spirit, at least in my eyes, well poised to do well in this game. Not gonna get shut down too much, I don't think. And then Team Druckwell really just needs to round it all out with. They already have the initiation in Batrider. Maybe a little bit more team fight or a little bit more just damage overall. And there it is, they pick up the Weaver. Ooh, so it might be a bat. Okay, they have so many ways they can play around with this. They might have the Batrider offlane, Ember mid, and then try lane with the Weaver. Or they can go, what? Weaver offlane, Batrider mid, try lane the Ember. Oh, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> they, they have so many ways to play it, but I, I just have a straight up feeling that it's gonna be an offlane Batrider. A safe trial line with Weaver and then a mid solo Ember Spirit. And Mongols, they're still looking for their last hero, most likely a mid solo hero oh, to yeah. go up against the Ember Spirit. They're looking and for that they are mid. They're taking their time to think a little bit more. Well, I think it also comes down because Team Druckwell, they basically have the advantage, and it's really anybody's game how they're going to lane it. And therefore, the Mongols, they can't really pick any one person who's going to say, I can counter this hero, I can deal well with that. And because of that, it kind of puts them in an awkward position. I want something like a Pudge. 
<laughs> Pudge but, loses to Ember. Oh, Pudge Without loses to both of the heroes they'd send mid, but I still want him. And they go for the puck. Yeah, they go for the safe puck. I don't feel puck is particularly good against Ember, though. Oh, no, I don't think so either. The Flame Guard just helps them out way too much, way too drastically against most intelligence bursters, and Puck, that, that is absolutely no exception as well. I actually don't like the Flame Guard build against ranged heroes. I prefer getting Slight of Fist and Searing Chains. Mm -hmm. I like to, I, I think Ember suits that aggressive style a little bit more. Whereas if you get Flame Guard, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm going to survive through your burst, but at the same time, I'm not going to do anything to you as well. I prefer like slap fists. Want to hit me? Sure, I hit you right back. Yeah, true. Fair enough, but for but way it's a more. Personal preference. It does look like Corrin has been pooled. He's probably going to be going mid, and with Batrider obviously already having his boots of travel, he's definitely going to be off laning right now. And the tri lane going the way of Weaver. Work it, baby, as this. Crystal Maiden and Miffy as the Trent. Going to be going this scary, scary tri lane. Cube going to be this Weaver over here. Vacant as the Batrider. And then we're going to have this mid-solo Corrin, the Ember Spirit, doing none too bad. And I've actually taken every naming time, every single time I possibly could. Mito, do you want to name some people? No, it's fine. You can take it. <laughs> okay, well, right I'm before an engagement happens, alright, we got Storm as the Nagas Iron Huntsman as the Ancient Apparition player, gonna be this Luna, and it looks like something might be happening in none too short of time. Sonke as the Puck, and up top we're gonna have Masquerade as a Centaur Warrunner once again. What's gonna be happening here, and now it looks like Huntsman in a bit of trouble, and boom, this is gonna be so difficult for him to get away from. Absolutely can't, in fact, so... Very easy kill going the way of Team Druckwell, and just a nice little play by them, hiding in the wings, hiding in this little camp, making sure that nothing goes down, and this is actually not on the magic bush, but it will be stopping this camp, so not too bad by any means, and it looks like this uh, bottom tri lane going to be having a fairly good time. You do have to deal with chilling touch, but uh, still... That is a lot of damage that can get piled out of Team Druckwell early on. And like you said, with Leech Seed being skilled first, Chilling Touch is going to do quite a bit, but Leech Seed is going to really help to mitigate that. Oh yeah. Grant is so strong and aggressive trialing. And this Luna should have a relatively hard time farming up. Not only, not only because they gave away the first blood, but it's just... The nature of the heroes they have. Oh, Miffy right on Huntsman once again. Want to give him absolutely nothing. Does get a chilling touchdown for his troubles, but it's not going to be enough. And now, Miffy, he just punches like a goddamn truck. 85 base damage to start. It is just ridiculous. And this is what I love to see. A Trent Protector playing aggressive. Playing very, very strongly. And now Cube, not too sure what he's oh, doing Cube. there. Gonna fall for free. Can't salve up fast enough. Probably just not realizing this sentry ward was down. But still, though, things not panning out. Pretty much giving up an unnecessary kill. A little unfortunate for how strong this tri lane started off. That was a huge loss for Druckwell. <laughs> so unfortunate. In that mid. Yeah, it looks like Corrin, though, he That's has gone for Sleight of Fist instead of Searing Change, so he's kind of going half the build you want, but I think he's just feel, feeling a little bit too dicey, has this Flame Guard available, doesn't want to get killed by Sanke, but the right clicks will be enough, and he does indeed fall. Can't quite get out of there in time. Not too sure if Searing Chains really would have done anything. Up top, you have Vacant against Masquerade. That is the start of quite a few stacks on him, but he has one point into return. That's going to be enough to put Vacant in a tough spot. My question was, where was the Living Armor? Oh, yeah! I think the Living Armor would have kept him alive. Maybe he just didn't see it. True, maybe a bit of miscommunication out there. Always forgetting that Living Armor is there. And now, with Weaver already down to basically one Lucent Beam, Three quarters life, he needs to be so careful. He is such a squishy hero, chilling touch always available. And do they have detection? They do obviously they have a sentry ward available, so Cube actually need needing to play very conservatively. He can't be very ballsy by any means, and Leech Seed not going to be enough to protect him by any means. Maybe Living Armor and Leech Seed, but... I actually think he can. Like, he, he should be fearless. Go in like a man. But... On the other hand, he's not really getting those last hits. Been missing quite a few. 
Mm-hmm. It definitely seems like that maybe unnecessarily unnecessary death of Cube uh, in the bottom lane kind of stopped kind of stopped the momentum that Druckwell was definitely cultivating down there. It's given obviously the Mongols enough time to make some stuff happen, make some things happen. Player, he's now got Lucent Beam level two. That's enough to take and do quite a bit of damage to Cube. And it's just I don't know. It seems now like Druckwell on the defense of themselves can't really deal too much with Chilling Touch. And uh, just the amount of damage that Mongols can throw down right now. Yeah, Sunkey is just so good on this puck. I mean, we've seen it many times throughout the ESPL series. That, and he works wonders on this hero. But with a single core lineup, Mongols, I feel like they have to play the way they are. They have to win trades. They have to go aggressive. Um, otherwise, you're just going to struggle against the multiple core heroes. Ooh, the the baby had smoked up. Now Miffy right there. in the thick of things. Looks like Leech Seed not going to be enough to actually save him. Cube now going for the kill. So, so far, a pretty alright trade. Doesn't really favor one or the other. Maybe Mongols? It's just even. Dead down the center, though, really. Okay, so Ancient Apparition was the one that picked up the kill. I feel like... Okay, so... I, I feel like... It came out a little bit better for Druckwell, um, because after all, Weaver was the one that picked up the kill. I don't know, it, it is a even trade, however. Oh yeah, pretty much dead even. In the mid, however, you do have Puck. Man, Sunk is just so good on this Puck. Constantly pressuring Corn. he's always keeping him very, very low, making sure that he's not getting this bottle anytime soon. And Now, Corn finally has, but clearly Puck leading the CS charge, doing quite nicely there. For his troubles, Miffy looks like he might be rotating around top. Still going pretty much tit for tat in the top lane there. Vacan can't kill Masquerade. Masquerade can't seem to quite kill Vacan. As soon as uh, Masquerade hits six, however, that everything might change a little bit. The Stampede going to be enough to obviously get him within range. But big double edge as well as Hoof Stomp. But double edge not being leveled up. He's got that level one return. Just doesn't feel like either of them can really kill each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so bottom lane, it seems like it's come, it has come to a stalemate, but with more and more levels being scaled up into the Chilling Touch, well right now it's only at 1, but the, the Chilling Touch is just so painful, and it feels like this trial lane has gotten to a point where they have to fall back, and CM is in trouble, oh, there's no way he's getting out. Nope, does indeed fall, now... Cube needs to be quite careful here as well. Wants to make something happen on uh, onto Luna, but just can't find the enough or can't find the damage to make it happen. And obviously, the Sentry Ward way too threatening for him. But oh, Puck has smoked up, made his rotations towards the top. They want to go on the Batrider, and this can potentially be a kill if the Triant wasn't around. Oh, on the bot lane, oh my goodness. they find the kill against uh, Weaver, and now things go in the way of the Mongols, usually Druckwell having the far superior early game, and now Batrider, not too sure what to do, Leech Seed does go down, it's just enough to almost save him, but now Masquerade trying so hard to kill Miffy, and it looks like Masquerade, oh, does not quite get out of there, Cube though, might get this, might get a lot for his efforts, does get a TP in, that bug doing a lot of annoying work against this puck, and just cannot quite get in the trees fast enough. So, Cube though, does he? Though he does get killed in the bot lane, finds a kill top, is around for the centaur. I think just in the last seconds. So not doing too bad, but still Luna leading the chart as far as uh, CS is concerned against him. That was a triple kill. So I mean, no, no, not triple kill. That was a killing. He ended a killing spree. I'm sorry. So, still, he got some decent gold from it. Let's see how much. Yeah, for three hundred, for about four hundred gold. So that's that's pretty sweet. Oh yeah, not bad at all. Now Sanke once again returning to the mid just to make Corrin's life a little bit more difficult. But with four points in Flame Guard, five hundred Magic Absorb, it just feels like Puck can't do too much. He does have way higher base attack damage when those treads are on. Uh, Int, however. Now it looks like Masquerade trying to make something happen onto Cube. Cube has to be so careful, though. He always needs to bide his time, stay way far back. And now, as soon as he's now within range, Masquerade oh, no. can just turn around. I Thought that was for sure going to be a big double edge, but nothing coming of it. And instead, Cube just time lapses all the way back home to safety. So, 
some dicey play, but it does pay off for him. If that, if you got the hoof stomp right, there was a chance for him to kill off Cube, but he time lapsed right out of it at the right moment. So yeah, great plays all around. Ooh, Miffy doing a little bit of rune control, gets a haste rune, and now he's just chugging along, not too sure why he's staying here, playing a little bit too ballsy, Corrin wants to find somebody, finds a Sanke with the chains, but it's not going to be enough, has Sleight of Fist, the Bat Rider on top of him, and there's that Scent Alt, every single time, just <laughs> saving people, and it's always worth it to use it, it's got a very, at least early on, not pretty much all the time, it's got a pretty low cooldown overall for what it does, and it's already only about a minute and a quarter away from being back up again, so not too bad at all. Oh, the Centaur ulti. It's so good. There was no other way the puck would have lived through that. Oh, and Batrider already has a Blink Dagger, so this is this is some nice, nice timing for the Blink Dagger. But so far, I don't think it's been utilized as of yet, and that was a very nice <laughs> D-Ward as well. That Sentry Ward. Took out a brand new observer. Ooh, cube up top with Dorky Baby trying their hardest to find a storm. Masquerade just cannot find a stun or a double edge for his life. This stupid little bug minusing quite a lot of armor. Masquerade trying very hard, can't get the double edge off quite in time, and then falls. So Dorky, or I should say, uh, Team Druckwell. Thanks to Dorkit Baby. There you go, my friend. Still getting a lot out of this map and making a lot of work happen. Batrider now onto the Luna. No Eclipse available. They really do need to take him out before that cut's going. Dorkit Baby now with the stun. Finally pops it, but the Naga Siren oh no. to save Team Druckwell. They gotta be loving that, but Sanke is there. Beautiful Dream Coil on two or three, I should say. Dorkit Baby in a heap of trouble. Gonna fall Batrider to get out of there, however, and that's really the one that you want to get out of there. Your core, your bat rider doing none too bad, so not uh, not the best of trades, but they get a Luna for two supports? About even, I guess. Holy crap, this Ancient Apparition is on a mega kill streak in under <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> How often do you see that? Not too often, I gotta say, but... Uh, still, things are things are looking pretty good overall. Just goddamn dead even in gold. Not quite so much an experience. Druckwell getting a little bit more out of it simply because it seems like Masquerade can't quite do whatever he really wants. And now it looks like we have Miffy and Vacan trying their hardest. Storm absolutely doomed. Doesn't even need to use Lasso. Oh, not doomed by any means. There's that Centaur ult every single time. And who? That is just so worth it. I mean, it's, it's like the new Trent living armor. It just gets people out of sticky situations. Wow, the Centaur tank. But so far, they've been using it defensively most of the time. Um, like to see Mongols play a little bit more aggressive. I, I just feel like with that draft, right, the, the late game is going to be so difficult for them. Um, in fact, XP is... What, about 2,500 XP lead for Druckwell and gold? It's negligible. <laughs> oh yeah, now, oh, Vacan finds playing a player, no Eclipse this time, an easy kill for these two out of Team Druckwell there, and they've got to be enjoying that. A bit unfortunate for Mongols, Luna a bit too far forward and with no support around. However, we do have Dworkid Baby and Cube in a bit of trouble. Masquerade, Dworkid Baby, just gonna eat all of this aggro and we do have cube getting out of there realizing that this is just not going their way but uh, still it's only a crystal maiden it's not your weaver so everything is a-okay radiance bottom tower is under attack And now it looks like Player, realizing just how squishy he is, always having his power treads on strength, also going for that very, very quick BKB, absolutely nothing else, trying to make sure that she uh, doesn't get bursted down and doesn't succumb to basically the burst that can come out of Team Druckwell. Obviously though, that BKB is not going to be doing too much against the Bat, but uh, up top it looks like we have Masquerade in a bit of trouble, Corn and Cute, both carries right in the thick of things, Dwork it, baby! 
He's doing his very best to help out. We do have this courier now in a bit of a tough spot, but it looks like Cube gonna be doing fine. Huntsman trying to rotate around, maybe get a courier, but Cube now. He's got his hand of Midas a little bit slow. He's actually instead went for a ring of health for that sustain, but uh, still 13 minute hand of Midas. Respectable, not bad by any means. Oh, yeah. They, they want to take this game late. Druck, no, Druckwell knows very well this game favors them into the late game, so why not? They have the heroes to take. Naga Siren into Song, Sonki is here. Where is that Dream Coil? They are just waiting. AL with Dream Coil. Oh no. D Team Druckwell absolutely melting. Corrin can't even get out of there. Flame Guard can only do so much. And that is the combo potential coming out of Mongols. Whenever you see Song of the Siren, you need to know Dream Coil is coming probably in AA ult as well. And whew, the Mongols with that team fight. That was just some amazing execution. Everything panned out perfectly for them. And now they're going to get a tower for this. But. At this stage, player's in so much trouble, he can't afford to split up from the rest of his team. They need to start stacking the Ancients for him so he can catch up, and in fact take the lead during the mid-game. Oh yeah, I mean he is, he is on his way to getting that BKB, but I don't think it's really going to be saving him too drastically in most of these fights. If you can always get that initiation with the Batrider, things are never really looking good. And Batrider, I mean, he's not without his own farm, honestly. He's actually leading in the CS charts net worth-wise. He's very close to Puck and Weaver. He's not doing too bad. And now he almost actually finds a Masquerade, but can't quite find the lasso, it looks like. Not too sure if he was looking for it, but he's got a Boots of Travel now as well. He can be all over the map right now. Yeah, the problem with Mongols lineup is it they're so reliant on the magical portion, and in Dota two, Dota two is a game where usually magic reliant teams don't scale very well into the late game, um, unless they're very very far ahead, of course. Um, but in this case, it feels like right now the game is still hanging in balance, but with a Midas pickup on the Weaver as well as having a late game hero like Ember Spirit. That that hero is crazy. Luna will not be able to take them out. Oh, Blink Bat finds a Sanke. Gonna get absolutely melted. No phase shift to get him out of there. And Miffy even using that ult to try and make sure no funniness happens. Looks like they're trying to turn this kill into a tower. At the very least, Dwork it, baby! MVP throwing down that freezing field, making sure that this Naga Siren doesn't get out of there alive. So they get two towers, it looks like, and a couple kills. Dwork it, baby! Always doing a lot of dwork at work. And Mongols don't didn't get anything in return, so that that's a another big loss. Things are just looking terrible for them. Radiant's top tower is under attack. They need to configure one of those big, big combos once again with oh, the Cube. sleep and then A or two. Absolutely overstaying his welcome. Dwork it baby as well. I do like to see that she's on her way though to getting what I hope. I hope is a BKB because Mongols with no way to actually go through that if you get a full freezing field off as soon as you see a Naga Siren ult oh. coming, coming off a cooldown things are gonna look good Ember Spirit showing up out of game. nowhere finding an AA with that sleight of fist wants to polish off player but with all of his things on cooldown what can he do no sleight of fist available and gets just bursted down ever too quickly player so incredibly close to death there a little bit unfortunate, and uh, looks like living armor was available. Not too sure what uh, <laughs> what he was doing there. Miffy, not on point with that living armor, I gotta say. Maybe he's healing up the towers. Towers are more important at this stage. <laughs> keeping them, like keeping the towers up, it's so good for map control. And um, I don't know. Maybe that was his priority. <laughs> Could be. He is indeed using it up, trying to make sure that Roche is obviously always very easy for them. Batrider just waiting for player. So incredibly slowed though. Oh my god, I was gonna say that that Centaur ult wouldn't stop the Batrider. I am goddamn wrong. That Batrider just sitting... Oh man, I didn't even realize that. Obviously, when Stampede's going, if the Batrider blinks on top of you, technically you stampede it on him, and he becomes 100% slowed, which means he really needs Force Staff to make anything happen. Man, this Centaur Warrunner, 
I want to say, like, the dark horseman of this game. Just doing a lot of work right now. And he falls. <laughs> yeah, and he's dead. <laughs> now Cube, though, in a bit of trouble. Always does have time lapse. Not going to be falling. Ember Spirit starting to come online quite nicely. Has that sleight of fist going. And this is when I'm starting to get a little bit worried for uh, the Mongols. Anybody who's got low HP... This Ember Spirit can just sustain, sustain, sustain through anything. And that bonus hero damage because of that Sleight of Fist, he's hitting for like 200 every single time. It's not looking too good for the likes of Huntsman, for even the likes of Sanke, who doesn't have that much HP. And, I mean, Sleight of Fist comes off so quickly, you're never really guaranteed to phase shift out of it. Yeah, Sleight of Fist is a pretty OP skill, with only 6 second cooldown. And it does 120 bonus damage to, to heroes. And now Ember is so close to that Battle Fury. He's so freaking close. Oh, and once, once he again, has it, there's that the Stampede faster. doing a lot of work, especially against the Bat. Miffy now in a heap of trouble. Couldn't quite get anything down. Oh, looks like he might be able to get a Courier, but no. Instead, trying to get out of here. Song of the Siren being used just in time and with cold feet. Looks like Mongols never quite out of this, and their team fight is just impeccable right now. So much work coming out of this team, and I gotta say, I gotta say, Stampede, this is just doing so much work so far in this entire game. Centaur War Runner, because of it as well, just obscenely good right now, and I wanna say, it's just, it's, I can't believe how well it's shutting down the Batrider. It's okay though. The course of Druckwell is still farming. We were like what? 50 gold away from that Lincoln Sphere? And Ember is also very close to that um, Battle Fury. It, it, the items are still coming along. They're picking up them at a pretty good pace. And wow, player just gets out in time to avoid the big gank. <laughs> Oh yeah, but I mean, this is the thing though as well, Mongols has so many big alts and so many big spells and amazing teamfight combinations that it's one of those lineups that you can never discount entirely. Even with BKBs on the field, it feels like the Mongols can always get some sort of perfect setup with Naga Siren with a big AA alt. It might be enough always to weather the storm and make things come out ahead for them, especially into this kind of mid... Things should not be looking too bad for them. And it's like whenever you see a Magnus. You can never really count out a team that has a Magnus. Simply because RP is so obscenely strong. And if he gets a perfect one, everything can fall apart. That's true. But I'd be a lot happier if the Luna was a support Luna. And it was a carry Naga Siren. But that, that's never going to happen. <laughs> oh no, not not so much. I, I don't know. I've never tried support Luna. Have you ever actually tried it? No, a world. that was a joke. <laughs> no, but it could happen. It could be a thing. If Luna had 600 range, attack range, and if Luna had starting, like, what, 700 HP, then sure. But until then, he's too paper to be a support to be of any use. Yeah, I think you're right. Overall, I just wish that, wish that a little bit more variety came out in the play, but... Luna, she's on her way, she's getting a Yasha, she's doing quite a lot of right click, not too bad, but like you've been saying, Storm. Corrin, well on his way bottom, bottom. to finding whatever he can. Storm, though, pops the mech, pops the Naga Siren ult, now they can't use that offensively, but Miffy, way too far forward, he's gonna get picked off for absolutely nothing, and very, very unfortunate for him. Not too sure what he was doing there, there's the Scent ult, though, being used in an aggressive manner like you had wanted, Batrider in a heap of trouble, indeed gets picked off. Cube actually going greedy, going for the secret shop now. Not too sure what he's doing. They know he's here. Cube, why did you buy that TP? It's even on cooldown. Can't do a single thing. And now, it looks like he is going to be able to get out of here scot-free, so not bad. But still, I guess when this is all happening, Corn is cleaning up mid. He's getting some good farm. But that's Mongol still getting a lot out of this bottom lane, and they want this tower now. Oh, yeah. And they, did they have the ultis though? So Puck's ultimate's on cooldown. Luna if, if has AL, Eclipse. Yeah, you got Luna. No Naga Siren. They don't, that's about it. And no Sunto ulti. Ooh, Corrin's so close. 
he has the money for the battle you now, and he, he's gonna pick it up. And yeah, th this is what I expected from Mongols. Without the ultimates, they just have to retreat. They are highly dependent on that big setup. It's like, it, it's so scary playing these lineups though, because it's, it's so hit or miss. If you hit, then yes, you're gonna take Taros and you're gonna win fights. But if you miss, then basically you're saying for the next minute or so, we are not gonna take any big fights. We'll look for small skirmishes. True. It does seem like a very... Ooh, both teams are actually smoking up, but Mongols line up very... It seems like they are very, very cooldown dependent. Oh, absolutely melting everybody. A beautiful coil on two. Dworkit Baby trying his best, but with no BKB going fully his way, can't do a single thing. And although the Mongols are pretty uh, cooldown dependent, they're using them well. They're finding those kills, and they're... They are transitioning from kills to towers now. They finally have that going for them, and Team Druckwell now. Looks like they're on the fence, on the ropes. What can they really do? Gold-wise, still god dead even, though, overall. Experience, though. Mongols starting to lead that quite substantially. Oh, man. I'm just so impressed by the execution. Mongols, they've been playing the team fights flawlessly. And, yeah... With all the farming edge that Drakul has, and all the ganking and pick off abilities they have, it is just not working out for them. I'm actually genuinely surprised. Um, and I think Roshan is viable for Mongols as well. Perhaps it, it's a little bit risky, but Weaver is at top. And perhaps the Mongols are just going to look to start pushing bottom as well. Like, I, I'm kind of speechless at just how well they've came back from, um, what, a 4k XP deficit, deficit and now they are 4k lead. Mm-hmm. So things still, I mean, still in flux, still anybody's game, but with how the Mongols have been executing their team fight, and now the fact that they are indeed staying as 5, staying as that big team fight lineup with a huge potential, and Naga Siren, the cooldown on Song of the Siren, just getting smaller and smaller. It definitely seems like Mongols poised to strike, poised to basically do whatever they want and force Team Druckwell to play their game. Druckwell trying to obviously not give them anything for free though. Push in top, it looks like they will get it. Fortification can be used, push in mid as well. And now, can they do anything? Masquerade misses that, but the big AA ult coming in. Cube can do his part, and now it looks like player does get there just in time. They will be able to get the deny on this tower. So not everything going the way of Team Druckwell. Corrin and Dworkid Baby though, gonna be able to get this tier two in the mid. Corrin now in a bit of trouble, needs to get out of here. Where's that flame spirit? Not too sure what he's doing. Oh, it's the silence, and of course Cube. Oh, trying to just wait there for his buddy. Nothing too much happening though. Sanke, Dream Coil on cute, but that living armor may be enough to protect him. He wants this courier. Where's that Geminate attack? Last one flies. Does indeed get it. Now everybody oh, all over cute. Oh, Doesn't matter. The time lapse all the way back. Ooh, everybody's streaming in, but nobody quite there to get him. And that Song of the Siren now. An unfortunate use. Oh, and he gets out of there. Nice. Cube with some nice little play there. Well on his way to a Deso. Very close to one, actually. I don't know if I would have preferred Deso on him or Ember. Probably Ember for the, the entire team-wide sleight of fist. No, no, no. Wow, but that I just have to compliment Cube. That was some sick plays. Um, taking out the courier, baiting out the Song of the Siren, and then getting out safely. But... Recently, there was um, a comparison for Ember Spirit, and apparently, oh, the best it? item to go for was Battle Fury. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just mass Battle Furies because if anybody yeah. is within like a 350 radius of each other, it's just then it's more damage every single time. Yeah, it's plus before I've always been like the Battle Fury kind of person. I rarely ever went Deso to begin with, but not not to say Deso isn't good though. It's still a brilliant item. Just that in this scenario, I, th I say the Weaver w is the preferred choice of um, the Deso carry. Whereas Ember, just stack up on your Battle Fuse and get your Crystalis Daedalus. I don't think K Corrin has read the post, and that's why he has a Crystalis. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I'm looking at Huntsman MGL. He's well on his way to that Ags. As soon as that comes up, 
It's going to be doing quite a bit of damage overall for his team, not to mention really, really stopping Trent Protector from doing pretty much anything in every single team fight. And with Naga Siren almost always available, to use that Song of the Siren to set up, it's going to be very, very big as far as that alt is concerned. So just watch out for that as well. Oh, you've turned into a robot, my friend. And now I can't even hear you. Oh, no! Oh no, well it looks like Mito or myself might be having some connectivity issues, and yes indeed. Yes indeed he do. It looks like everything crashed. Mito, are you there? Yeah, the, the server just crashed. Yeah, crashed, so rebooted. Everything is back to normal. But still a little okay, bit worrisome. Interesting. Either way, looks like yeah, Q trying his me. very best to take out player. Can't quite find him. Okay, so we're all good, right? No yeah, I think so. Oh, a little, little worried there, but uh, everything panning out A-OK, -okay, not too bad. I think right now Team Druckwell, I mean, they have the items, they have the heroes. They're well poised to take a fight in the uh, in the Roche pit, or at the very least, take the Roche right now. Make sure that Naga Siren is nowhere to be seen. They have vision, though. That's the biggest threat, though, is if they try and sneak a Roche in, though, it could just go tits up go horribly for them, and basically give Mongols the game, or at the very least, a rack. So, they ne I think they just need to play so carefully if they want this Roche, but, I mean, it's definitely a big goal for them. If they could take that, I think the next team fight would go a lot nicer for them. I still feel like the time is ticking for Mongols, though. They've applied some great pressure. They've gotten some items. They've gotten some lead. But if you look at the gold and XP graph, it's still just going back when they, whenever they play the farm game, it will always favor Druckwell. And Druckwell, they, they should just abuse the fact that they can go for the farming oriented ideas. And if Mongols are happy to sit back, then I believe Druckwell will be as well. Especially now that they've initiated this kind of split pushing thing. And it's like there's a dance off down at bottom between Masquerade and Wyken. So it's, it's interesting to watch. But Drakko going for this split pushing idea, it's so smart. Because Mongols, even though they do have pick off abilities, they need to put in so much resources in killing one or two heroes. Yeah, very true. Oh, and this is such a. I think. Oh, not to not to interrupt, but I, I believe. Were you going to talk about Miffy's uh, use of Leech Seed just to heal up his creep to try and make sure they keep getting in? But I was just going to say. It looks like Team Druckwell, they've started to think about what's happening in the game, started to figure out the strategy that Mongols is uh, is using right now and realizing that they are always big on team fights. And if they split up, play the farm game, play that split pushing game, they're going to come out ahead. But uh, yeah, before I so rudely interrupted you, what's up? I love to pick up from Masquerade. Having that Lincoln Sphere and putting it on one of the core heroes like Sanki or putting it on the Weaver, I mean, sorry, not Weaver, on the Luna. Yeah, it's it's gonna do great work for them. Just keeping those core heroes alive and not being able to allow the Batrider to lasso them. It, it's such a smart item choice. And that being said, Sanki also has his uh, sheep stick, so now they have even more ganking power. It's all dependent on when they're gonna get the pickoffs and how to transition that into a push. And Cube, that Lincoln Spear really saving him in any of these single times where he's getting close to picked off. It's always a Lucent Beam to pop it, but they are just trying to rely very heavily on that very, very short stun duration to try and make something happen, hold them in place for Sanke to get there, turn them into a sheet, but just never panning out the way they want to. Vacant now, waiting in the wings, seeing if he can't do anything. And now with a Centaur Alt being used, seeing if they can't make anything happen, but it just looks like Miffy. Not gonna be do too worried about it. Just gonna heal himself up with Leech Seed, and now, you have Vacant pinging out this Luna. He can get in there, try and make something happen, and it looks like they are trying to spring this trap on him. Vacant can hold him there for a while. Needs to be very careful here, though. And now is going to jump on him. Where is it? There is it. Trying to bring him as close as possible to the rest of his team. Cube all over him. Pops the BKB, but that's a lot of damage coming out of Cube. And now where can they find it? A nice lucky crit with this Chris going the way of Cube, and they find a nice kill there. However, Trent Protector getting killed in the mid by the rest of Mongols. Still though, Luna for a Trent, that is always what you want to see. Yeah, it's only a level 9 Trient, and he has what? Observer Wards. 
<laughs> Arcane boots and a and a smoke. <laughs> oh no! You turned slightly robotic again. I missed whatever you said, but oh, I'm sorry, my friend. It looks like Dwarkit Baby though, trying his hardest to stack this up and uh, nice. Obviously, gonna make things a little bit easier for um, for Ember Spirit and I, I... Weaver to do whatever they can. Oh baby, that sleight of fist. Oh, and once again, everybody, server has crashed. Mito is nowhere to be seen. It looks like, if anything, he's just gonna be gone. As that's happening, Naga Siren though finds a Weaver along with a Sanke, and there it is. It definitely looks like it has. Brief, brief. Yo, what's Let's up? just switch over to our original, original place, if you know what I mean. That's what I'm thinking. Um, I think. All right, let's let's shift over and continue. All right. So sorry, everybody. Looks like we're just having a few technical difficulties. Why don't you look at how nice and cute Puck looks as we fiddle? And there we have it. Mito, are you there? Yep. Yeah. Everything's cool now, everybody. Don't worry, crisis averted, and now it looks like we get in right back into the game as soon as the Mongols show up to try and take this Roche. And, I mean, rightly so, why not? Ember Spirit can go in there, but what can he really do? If he can slight a fist almost from the top of here, and he can indeed, that is just so terrifying to go up against. Roshan, though, just waiting. Not too sure if he's actually going to go in there. Immediately, Sanke is all over him, and now... Getting stunned. Corrin, though, in a heap of trouble. Luna getting the Aegis. This is a bad place to be with Corrin down. That is a lot of your anti-push going out the window. That sleight of fist is just so difficult to push into. And now, is there a buyback for him? No, he doesn't quite have enough mana. So this is going to be a very hard defense for Team Druckwell to handle. Oh, yeah, and Sanki. He has the Lincoln effect around him. And his, his sheep stick is going to be off cooldown. This is when Jockwell's heroes can potentially die one by one. They have to be so careful. And Treants needs to start healing up the towers. Oh, Miffy is just waiting for his teammates to come, and they're going to go around the back. Well, wow, it feels like it feels like Barra, they don't even want to defend without the Ember Spirit, or it just feels like they can't defend. And towers oh, yeah. are, and Raxus are just falling one after another. Oh, they're going for straight for the GG. Oh no, this is not at all what Team Drucko wanted to see. They wanted to see definitely just a tower, a Rax, and then back, but now this is going to be a lot happening. Dwarkit Baby falling immediately. Batrider can't find anybody who he really wants. Nobody can really get a kill, and Mongols going straight for the throat. Cube doing whatever he can, but the Glaives, there's just too many bouncing targets, and Cube now trying his very best. Can't time lapse fast enough, but Ember Spirit is back into the mix. Miffy is there, gets at least a stall with Overgrowth, and now it looks like Corrin, he needs to actually try and kill every single person on the Mongols. Was able to get a player, not too sure if he can polish him off. Flame Guard, that's it! And now this is definitely gonna be GG. Mongols, once again, going towards the finals. Ooh, man, some very stellar play coming out of both of these teams, but the Mongols' is team play and just those alts, my god, you can't deal with them. Oh, whoa, so I, I thought that was somewhat anticlimactic. We didn't have the big team fight. Nothing happened. Sort of towers just kind of fell one after another, and suddenly it was GG. <laughs> yeah, man. Glaives are just too strong. What can I say? I guess. But there we have it, and I digress. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the ESPL Weekly Series number eight. We're gonna be having the finals coming up in none too short a time, I believe. Ooh, what? Either next week or no, the it's week other after that. Oh, no, no, I'm talking about oh, the finale, the whole finale. The, the it's coming main up. main event. Main event. It's coming up in the next couple weeks. Stay tuned. We're going to be talking about who is actually coming to that, the two invited teams. But in the meantime, these games have rung. I wouldn't run, I don't want to say long, but long enough that there is going to be almost no delay, folks. Once again, jumping right into the next semifinals, this time between Seed Nullis and who is that last handsome team? Team Infused, so don't go anywhere. It's only going to be about five minutes. We're going to have some more good Dota coming for you. I'm Briefcase, and with me so far has been Mito. Yep, catch you guys in the next semifinals. Coming right up.